Mom's house. Cooking dinner and literally had sweat dripping off my forehead. Ugh. Which is why we're going to be drinking. Because that'll thin the blood and make me feel cooler. And if you're going to fact check me on that, uh, you're an asshole. And fuck yourself. Anyway, hello internet. How you all doing? It's good to see you. I hope you're all well. I hope you all had a great day. Um... Tonight we're going to do something a little new for this channel. We're going to be discussing things like Atlantis, and my theories on where Atlantis is, and what Atlantis is, and all that fun stuff. But first, it's important to start, well, it's not important to start. I want to start, poisonly, with a, uh, talking about Egypt. And why Egypt? Well, because I feel like Egypt, and the conspiracy theories surrounding Egypt, and all the misinformation, really kind of hammer home some important points. Um, you'll hear, I'm sure... Most of you, if not all of you, have heard conspiracy theorists talk trash about how, oh, the ancient Egyptians couldn't have made the pyramids, the stone slabs are too big, or we still can't make them today. That's a new one I heard, actually. I'd never heard anyone say that until I was watching a, uh, a video by Many Minute Men? Many Minute Man? Many Minute Man. Many Minute Man. Many Minute Man! Many minute man. Um, he's an actual archaeologist, unlike me, he's just a random douchebag on the internet who likes to talk about his thoughts. But he is an actual archaeologist who does debunkings and whatnot, and he was debunking a TikTok conspiracy theorist who, yeah, we still can't build the pyramids today. No, dog, we totally could. We, we, yeah, we could do it a lot easier and with fewer people than they did. Totally possible. Totally possible. But we don't, because it would be expensive, and there's no fucking point. What do we get out of it? But anyway... The reason why I want to start talking, before we talk about Atlantis, and start talking about Egypt, is because of that whole thing where, oh, well, nobody knows how they did it, or it's impossible for them to do it, yada, 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 yada. Um, it's basically, I want to caution people against making presumptions based on your own personal lived experience. And it's really easy to do with Egypt because of someone from my own home state of Florida. Allow me to introduce you to the Coral Castle. Up. We'll probably look up images somewhere else. Uh, Coral Castle. You can see all these huge structures. Uh, let's look at some more images. See that? Little, little designs and whatnot. All pretty and whatnot. Look at little Saturn. It's a little Saturn. Isn't it cute? And it cute? The Coral Castle is made out of huge chunks of limestone. Like we're talking multiple tons in weight. They are massive, massive. Oh, also, I expect most of you will not have heard of this because I live literally like a three, four hour drive from this place and I only heard about it like a decade ago. Anyway, Coral Castle, the massive stone stab tiles, jack, slabs, slabs, the slabs, they're slabs, everybody loves slabs. These massive stone slabs that were put into place and maneuvered and structured up by one dude. One dude. And he wasn't doing, you know, the things you would expect, cranes or any of that. He did it all with fulcrums and pivots. Uh, there's great videos on there. There's also videos, I think, I mean, they're probably still on YouTube. Things don't tend to disappear from YouTube. I saw these videos about a decade ago when I first heard about Coral Castle, of people moving huge multi-ton stone slabs using the exact same things this dude did to build Coral, Coral, Coral Castle. I can't speak tonight. Anyway. Um, but yeah, he used massive limestone slabs, and he did all of this himself. Just hard work and application of physics. So, and none of it was like, like I said, it's all pulleys and pulleys and pivot points and leverage. Just very simple engineering trick or uh, physics tricks. And all of this is tools that would have been available to the Egyptians. So again, just keep that in mind don't don't you have to kind of keep in mind the history of an object as well as like keep in mind that you are not all-knowing so like your perceptions could be skewed that's that's why I wanted to talk about this um, also would not mind going one day to visit Coral Castle I don't I I feel like I would have to find something else in the area around it you know because it doesn't feel like an all-day trip right it doesn't let's look at more pictures it doesn't feel like an all-day trip. It feels like, uh, you know, 30, 40 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be fun to visit for a little bit, but I feel like it would get bored, boring quick. And, uh, yeah, it, it's in Homestead, Florida. I'm in Orlando, Florida. That's literally three to four miles. 
don't want to drive that far for a 30 minute thing, you know what I'm saying? Like we saw that image. Here's another image of the same basic area. They turned it into a museum, by the way. I don't know if his family donated it or what, but it is a museum that you can visit. They are, have regular business hours. Also, like, this is cool as shit, right? But, like, goddamn, dude, get a life. <laughs> like, I'm glad you did it. But, like, I don't, I don't, there's a, there's an image of the guy, too, that's supposed to be life-size. I, I, I don't know a lot about the man, and I'm sure this will tell, tell us something about him. Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, well, fuck. That, there used to be a gate there, a big stone gate, massive, heavy-ass stone gate. But it would move in the breeze, or you could really slide it open easy, and no one knew how it worked or how he did it until it broke, and it was on a steel rod attached to a truck bearing. <laughs> so that one, slightly less things that Egyptians had access to. Uh... Just one man working alone for 28 years until his death in 1951. Edward Lee Scalnin, five foot tall, only five foot, I thought he was five foot something, and weighed 100 pounds. Spurned by his lost love, he set out to prove to her and the world that he could do something remarkable. Yeah, we, we all could. I don't know why you would do this. I don't, I'm glad you did. It's cool, but like, goddamn, dude. Anyway. So yeah, all of this, one dude, oh, there, there's the gate. There's where the gate was still intact. That huge gate would just rotate real easy. Like, I've seen modern, modern-ish pictures of, like, children pushing it open. I think they said it broke in the 80s. I don't know, I'm getting too fixed on this. We should really move on, but... It's a fascinating sight and a fascinating story. This one dude spends all this time built... 1986. I was five. Spends all his time building this huge monument. And, okay, sorry, I completely forgot to mention, part of the reason I wanted to bring this up. Because, like I said, ignore your own predilections and your own, you know, there's always more new stuff to learn. People, for years following his death, said he used psychic powers to build it, that he channeled the wind, that he sang to the stones and sang them into place. And this, 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 these legends and everything grew so out of control that his buddy, who I don't, I'm sure he passed away by now, but his buddy wrote a book in like the 90s about him, <laughs> about how he fucking built the place. He's like, dog, no, it's hard work and ingenuity. It has nothing to do with magic. Just let it fucking go. He found it insulting that the guy wasn't getting the credit he deserved for his hard work and for his, you know, like this, this is incredible. There's, a, there's an overhead view, so you can get a, a better idea of how large this place is. It's cool as shit, right? Again, I don't think I'd want to spend like an entire day at this one park, but yeah, it's good, it's cool. So anyway, no psychic powers. No aliens telling him how to build it. None of that, he just... Wait, hold up. I gotta read this headline real quick. <laughs> Sued by a Florida tourist trap. For depiction in Fortnite. Uh, that looks nothing like Coral Castle. The only thing they stole is the name. I don't feel like you should be able to copyright Coral Castle, right? Like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so anyway, all that being said, I uh, wanted to talk about Atlantis, because I've got a theory about Atlantis. Uh, and there have been lots of theories about Atlantis over the years. Of course, it's one of the most well-known um, myths because until something real is found, it is a myth. And I, the site's so old, I don't think anything will ever be found that can state definitively 100% no, this is Atlantis. Uh, I do have my own personal theory that we're going to get into and discuss tonight, but I'm not going to say even a little bit that this is 100%. There's not, we, it's, it's been too long. It's been way too fucking long. It is impossible to stay with any level of certainty whatsoever. Anything about Atlantis, whether it was just a myth, or whether it was just the X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter. We can state that certain things that have been, I'm probably going to spell this wrong, several things that have been tied to Atlantis are not 
Uh, this is the Bimini Road, if I remember right. Oh, there it is. I thought it was more towards the Panhandle. But apparently, it's off the coast of Miami. Oh, yeah. Um, but people have stated that this underwater structure is a man-made roadway. Uh, and there have been theories such as that this is road to or from Atlantis, Utah. And all of that's horseshit. <laughs> all of that's horseshit. Ancient apocalypse. Um, but no, so... We don't really have to get too far into it, but the Bimini Road is basically these stone slabs that you're seeing are sedimentary rock. As the way I don't watch the dude, a minute, mini Minute Man, he does a great breakdown on this. But it's basically you have layers of shit stacking on top of each other over time, so they calcify and turn into a form, form of stone. Then sea levels recede over the course of thousands of years. Those stones get above the water, they get heated by the sun, that causes them to dry out, that causes them to crack. They crack in perfectly straight lines because that's a sedimentary line that formed in order to create that particular layer in the sediment. And then they lay next to each other because, you know, they're next to each other, no one's fucking moving them. They're sitting there. And then when you look at ones like this, where you're like, well, clearly those are grout lines. Well, you have cracks formed in the stone that then the sea levels rise again, and again, we're talking about a time scale of thousands of years. The water rushing between those cracks erodes them away, and it ends up with... But it has been severely studied, and severely... People have gone over it, and no, it's flat out. It's natural formation. It has nothing to do with Atlantis. It is, however, fascinating and beautiful. I don't, I don't see why we can't just leave it at that. I don't see why people got to try to make it into something that's not. Um, you know what? Before we get into my ship, let's see what other people are saying, because I'm curious. Probably going to run into my own theory, because I'm not some uber genius. <laughs> it's not just my theory. A lot of people think what I think. Uh, well, city of Atlantis. Signed of a round place. On Google Earth. Isn't that, isn't that a trench? <laughs> and sign of a round, what, what the fuck does that even mean, sign of a round place? Hercules Piers, Greece. Okay, well, whatever. And that one's putting it right there. Where that sign, sign of a round place was, look at that. I've never heard of that sign of a round, whatever. Whatever. Underwater mountains, another distinct possibility. I mean, there are really cool things we've seen underwater, like uh, statues and temples that don't seem like they, you know, like, how the fuck did they get there? But sea levels could have changed, or a ship could have been carrying statues and dropped them. I who the fuck knows. Some of them do seem a little sus, though. Atlantis confirmed! Oh, that's a YouTube video. I don't want to... I just get a... In Africa. Or off the coast of Africa. Anyway. Well, clearly we've been looking for Atlantis in the wrong place, dog. We haven't found it. Anyway. So, yeah. There, there's a lot of theories surrounding this. Some of these are images we're going to look at again in a little bit. But there's a lot of theories surrounding Atlantis. Um, I've been trying to find... That's my theory right there. We'll get there. But that's my theory right there. Um, <laughs> again, it's not just my theory. It's... But, so... <laughs> I thought I had a thing pulled up with it already. So first, first things first, we don't need the Coral Castle anymore. So let's look up Homer's description of Atlantis, the lost city of Atlanta. First to a place called Atlantis. That name was coined by Plato. Okay. Okay, so we'll play. I thought I could have sworn it was Homer. I was wrong. It happens. Two tectonic plates are pulling away from each other. Really? That, this, that's more fascinating to me, because usually when you would think of an uh, underwater mountain range, you would think of two tectonic plates rubbing against each other and that friction driving the mountain range up. I didn't. I would have assumed that pulling away from each other, they would create a trench, or a, which there are trenches all over the ocean floor. That's why that was my first guess. Uh, 360 BC, the founders of Atlantis, he said, were half god and half human. I said, I can't... National Geographic is a paywall. We can't look at that one. Okay. What exactly did Plato say? 
Fuck you, Core. Large and powerful city and state that existed around 9,000 years before his time. The city was said to be located beyond the Pillars of Hercules. Which... Not to be a nitpicky bitch, but... Plato was Greek. It's, it's Heracles, not Hercules. Hercules was the Roman name. It's, it's Heracles. Oh, okay, now that makes a lot of sense. Um, you can't really read it, the chat and the video, because dips white text on a white background. But she's saying, when they pull away from each other, magma comes up to replace, and that would make sense. The magma coming up forms the new the new mountain line, and possibly underwater volcano. And technically, that would be an underwater volcano. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, Heracles. Uh, so a large uh, the city was said to be located between the pillars of Heracles, which is believed to refer to modern day Strait of Gibraltar. And here we're getting to that thing I was talking about. Believed to be the modern day state of Gibraltar. So people will see that and assume that, that it has to be near the Strait of Gibraltar, but we, we don't know. We don't. It seems likely, but it's not 100%. Uh, I don't want to do Quora. I don't trust Quora. The Egyptians described Atlantis. As an island consisting mostly of mountains in the northern portions and along the shore and encompassing a great plain and an oblong shape in the south. Extending in one direction, 3,000 stadia. But across the center, it was two. Across the center and land, it was 2,000 stadia. Eh, and yes, I know you can't use Wikipedia for like research general, but I'm, I'm a fucking YouTuber and Twitch streamer. The fuck do I care? Oh, uh, bro, across the mountain was low on all sides, broke it off all around, but the center island itself was five stods in diameter. Episode and following Plato, the daughter. Let's see if there's anything here we need. This part's important, but afterwards there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men and a body sank into the earth, and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. For which reason the sea in those parts is impassable and impenetrable, because there was a shoal of mud in the way, and this was caused by the subsidence of the island. <laughs> of Lesbos. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. The term lesbian actually comes from ancient Greece. There was an island full of I think only women were allowed to go there. If not only women, it was mostly women, and they were poets and whatnot, and they were tra taught by a woman named Sappho's on the island of Lesbos. And so that's why the term lesbian comes from the island of Lesbos, because, of course, there's rumors that if you have a bunch of women there, they have to be boning each other. And when you talk about romantic love within, say, lesbian pornography, that would be sapphic erotica, because it's named after Sappho's. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Anyway, point is there's theories all over the place. But we're going to get to my theories, because it's my stream, and I get to talk about what the fuck I want. And if you don't like it, please stay and donate anyway. Hey, there's a dark mode! Woo! My eyes ain't burning! Fictional or metaphorical myth. Others believe it to be real. Of course, a lot of people in the modern era believe it to be real because we want life to be more entertaining than it is. Uh, basically, my thoughts are... It's probably somewhere in the middle, right? With with a lot of this shit, the the answer is usually not cut or dry, white and black. It's it's somewhere in the middle. But anyway, so let's go history channels thing that I pulled up earlier. See, I did some preparation for the stream, arguably not enough, but yeah, fuck you. So, b -b 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 top six theories about Atlantis. Who who classifies that? Who classifies? Anyway. Uh, one, Atlantis was a mid-Atlantic continent that suddenly sunk into the ocean. The idea that Atlantis was at an actual historical place, not just a legend invented by Plato, didn't surface until late 19th century, which is really fucking late. In his 1882 book Atlantis, The Antediluvian World, the writer Ignatius Donnelly argued that argued the accomplishments of the ancient world, such as metallurgy, language, and agriculture, must have been handed down by an earlier advanced civilization, which people still fucking believe today. Holy shit as the ancients weren't sophisticated enough to develop these advances on their own. Uh, we'll get into it in a minute. Assuming the Atlantic Ocean was only a few hundred feet deep, Donnelly described a continent flooded by shifting ocean waters that sank in the exact location Plato said it did, and the Atlantic Ocean just outside the Pillars of Heracles, the two rocks that mark the entrance to the Strait of Gibraltar. 
Long after modern oceanography and a greater understanding of plate tectonics poked holes in the shifting waters thesis, some continue to cling to Donnelly's theory, mostly due to its adherence to Plato's placement of Atlantis in the mid-Atlantic. I think it is important to note that Plato was a historian and philosopher, not a cartographer. But there's more important shit to come on Plato. We'll get there. Um, this ancients weren't sophisticated enough to develop these advances around. This shit always pisses me off. It always has and it always fucking will for very obvious reasons. One, ancients were far more advanced than we give them credit for in most cases. For instance, Neanderthals who pre preceded Homo sapien were using pitch in order to create really strong tools. So it's still basically sharpened stone and wood, but they're using pitch to hold them together and that's already more advanced than we give them credit for. Pitch is basically heating pine tar into a black tar-like substance that you then apply to the weapon and it's like a really strong adhesive that hardens similar to cement but not quite as strong the point is we didn't think they had that tech we didn't think they knew to do that and we were fucking wrong we've been wrong about so goddamn much for the ancient world because you know it's not a few thousand years it's not a lot left so like also the, the other reason this pisses me off is because it's based and you're on the internet you know it's based on white supremacy it's based on the idea that we are the master race, and we are perfect, and no one else is as advanced as us. Therefore, the ancients had to have had help. Otherwise, how could they possibly have done these things? They're not us. It's dumb as fuck. I hate it. I hate it so goddamn much. The only real difference between these ancient humans and us is that they don't have the wealth of knowledge that we have to start from. That's it. They were just as smart as us. They just weren't quite far enough along on the timeline. They hadn't built that knowledge through generations and generations and generations the way we have, because they were starting the process. Anyway, rant aside. Rant over? Anyway, Atlantis was followed by the Bermuda Triangle. I don't even want to fucking read this one. <laughs> Fuck the Bermuda Triangle, it's not special. Inspired by Donnelly, that motherfucker again? Isn't that the same bitch who was responsible for this shit? Uh, Donnelly, him? Yeah, fucking asshole. Inspired by Donnelly, many later's writer, later writers expanded on his theories and added their own speculations as to where Atlantis may have been. One of these writers was Charles Bullitz, a grandson of the founder of the well-known language schools and author of many books on paranormal phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. In the 1970s, Bullitz claimed Atlantis was a real continent located off the Bahamas that had fallen victim to the notorious Bermuda Triangle, a region of the Atlantic where a number of ships had supposedly disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Supporters of, his, of this theory point to the discovery of what looks like man-made walls and streets found off the coast of Bimini. Fucking Christ. Hey, I called it in advance. What the fuck? You! Yeah. Although scientists have evaluated these structures and found them to be natural beach rock formations. That's the term I forgot. Beach rock. It it's really sad. I live in Orlando. I live 30 minutes from beach in two different, well, two hours in one direction, 30 minutes in the other direction. Anyway, the point is, I live next to a fuck ton of beaches. I spent a lot of time on beaches growing up, and I forgot the term beach rock. One of the words I'm most familiar with on this fucking planet, and I fucking forgot beach rock. Anyway, whatever. Yes, it was beach rock. It's not real. Now, again, we, we looked at the pictures. Uh, if you don't know the science behind it, and you're seeing this for the first time, it is very easy to be like, <gasps> That's my mate! That's a fucking road! But I already closed the picture, didn't I? But the other thing, remember, is when you look at the Bimini Road and those those rock formations, you don't see anything else that would signify a road. For instance, if it had been a road, you would find cast off around it. Um, basically like the side of our highway. Humans have not changed much over the centuries. You would find trash. There would be trash. I know it's on the bottom of the ocean floor. Some of that shit would remain. Uh, pottery wagon wheels, whatever, but also the stones would be worn and the patterns of whatever. If they used horses, if they used wagons, you would see wheel ruts, you would see not necessarily hoof marks, but over time you'll see a wear pattern that is indicative of horse travel, and none of that's there. It's almost like the shit was just laid. Except for the gaps from the erosion. But other than that, there's no, there's no evidence that anything had ever traveled over it. You would definitely see that if it were, in fact, a man-made road. Atlantis was Antarctica. Oh my god, you motherfuckers are stretching. Another theory that Atlantis was actually a much more temperate version of what is now Antarctica. I've heard this theory and I think it's dumb as fuck. There's absolutely zero evidence to support that Antarctica was ever temperate whatsoever, but hey, let's roll with it. It's based on the book of Charles Hapgood. I'm not gonna lie, I love the name. Whose 1958 book, Earth's Shifting Cross, featured a forward by Albert Einstein. Einstein, no. 
According to Hapgood, around 12,000 years ago, the Earth's crust shifted, displacing the continent that became Antarctica from a location much further north than it is today. Wait, so it's farther north? Oh, sorry, Antarctica, South Pole. I, my brain flipped. Shit, whatever. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, from location much farther north than it is today. This small temperate continent was home to an advanced civilization, but the sudden shift to its current frigid location doomed the civilization's inhabitants, the Atlanteans, and the magnificent city was buried under layers of ice. Hapgood's theory surfaced before the scientific world gained a full understanding of plate tectonics, which largely relegated its shifting crust idea to the fringes of Atlantean beliefs. Also, I mean, modern science has already debunked this motherfucker, but... And I call him motherfucker because I cuss a lot. It's a real problem. I should work on it. Um, he's operating in good faith. I'm not going to give him too much shit, but I will say, even though plate tectonics and all that have already firmly debunked his stuff, I'm going to debunk it slightly farther. Um, how would Plato have heard of this civilization if it was 12,000 years ago? Uh, Plato would have been, I don't know the exact dates, but it would have been, I can look it up, but it'd be approximately 4,000 years ago, and this was on the opposite side of the fucking planet. If we're talking Antarctica, we're most, most likely, likely talking, talking about, about it from, from the edge of South, South America. America. Which, how would Plato have ever heard about that? But also, more importantly, if this is an advanced civilization that supposedly taught the rest of us how to do everything, because apparently we're incompetent and can't learn it ourselves, as the continent shifted, we're talking about a phenomenon that would occur over hundreds or thousands of years. Continents do not shift like that. It takes forever, about six days. They would see the signs coming, and they would be able to move farther north. They would... We'd, and even if they tried and failed, we would still find evidence of them in South America. Well, even even if they didn't try, even if they just stayed on Antarctica and died, which, why? Uh, we would still find evidence of them all through South America, because there were Mesoamerican peoples in that time period, and these people would have been trading with them. Also, why were the Mesoamericans not far more advanced? Oh, they had pyramids and whatever. Anyway, point is, it's, it's bull. It's, it's good-hearted bull. It was trying to explain a world which is what I'm doing, so, but it, it's still bold. Uh, the story of Atlantis was a myth for retelling of the Black Sea Float. This theory presumes the land itself was fictional, but the story of its demise was inspired by an actual historical event, the breaching of the Bosporus by the Mediterranean Sea and subsequent flooding of the Black Sea around 5600 BC. I think I actually heard a uh, mini Minute Man talk about this in one of his videos. Anyway. At the time, the Black Sea was a freshwater lake, half its current size. The flooding inundated civilizations known to flourish along the shore with hundreds of feet of seawater in a short period of time, perhaps less than a year. As inhabitants of the region scattered, they spread tales of the deluge and may have led thousands of years later to players of and this one seems this one seems like plausible. Again, not my theory, I do have my own theory and we are going to get there, but this one seems plausible. Um, and this understanding why is important to my understanding my part of my theory. Um, so you have these people living on the shore of this lake. It's a freshwater lake. There's most likely, you know, aquatic life in there. And then, of course, you're going to have a large amount of vegetation growing along the edge of the lake. It's actually an ideal place to form a civilization. So, you would most likely, with the size they're saying... No, they're not saying. I think I saw a picture of it. Anyway, whatever. There would probably be a handful of civilizations, right? It's even Maybe not civilizations. Maybe that's the wrong word. But small encampments, cities, towns, whatever you want to say. And then this, the water level starts rising dramatically, and they start to see their homes flood and whatnot, and it's like, they leave. In this instance, nobody dies. They leave. But when they leave, they, they take stories of this location with them. Um, now, at the time, there's no written history. There's, um, I don't think... We might have had the bards already, because that, that was one of the original purposes of bards. Yes, that's right, D&D-style bards was to sing tales about the history, because otherwise you lose the history. Um, or you just sit around a campfire and talk about your history, right? Share stories, what we share horror stories, or scary stories around a campfire. Um, this is how they kept track of their history. Which seems backwards to us, but of course we have writing, we have video, yada 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 yada. Anyway, uh, it, it ends up becoming a multi-generational game of telephone where each generation is telling the same story, but it, it alters over time because someone doesn't remember a detail. Or it, uh, or it uh, gets embellished because if you're one of these bards, right, you get paid, you eat, you drink, based entirely on how good a narrator you are and how good your stories are. 
so you embellish uh, in order to make it a more interesting story, or you find you find new details that only you know because again, this makes it more likely for you to get hired and for your stories to be told. Uh, any one of these things, all of these things probably occur over the course of hundreds, if not thousands of years. The story alters and changes. As it alters and changes, it gets more and more grandiose as they try to make it more entertaining. So, what starts as, yeah man, the lake grew like fucking out of control and the water tasted weird because of course it was salt water and not fresh. Of course, it tasted weird. It was fucking weird. And then, like, our entire village was gone, becomes an ancient civilization, wiped out in a single night by the sea, even though this shit took a year or two. That, this, this one actually does seem plausible. Atlantis is the story of the Minoan civilization, which flourished in the Greek islands circa 2500 to 1600 BC. This is actually my theory. This is, this is my theory. One of the most recent Atlantean theories concerns the civilization that flourished in the Greek islands of Crete and Thera, now Santorini. And I've always heard this one as Minos. Hey, hey, shut up, man. I'm talking. It's not your fucking story. Piss off. I've always heard this one as Minos. We'll get into that because it actually is part of the story that pisses me off a little bit. Uh, more than 4,000 years ago, the Minoans, named for the legendary king Minos, believed to be Europe's first great civilization. The Minoans built splendid palaces, constructed paved roads, and were the first Europeans to use a written language. At the height of their power, however, the Minoans suddenly disappeared from history, an enduring mystery that has fueled belief in a link between this great doomed civilization and Plato's Atlantis. Historians believe around 1600 BC, a massive earthquake shook the volcanic island of Thera, triggering an eruption that spewed 10 million tons of rock, ash, and gas in the atmosphere. More than that, tsunamis that followed the eruption were large enough to wipe out Minoan cities throughout the region, devastation that may have made the Minoans vulnerable to invaders from the Greek mainland. You know what, I was going to start quantifying things they said there, but... We'll, we'll get there. We're going to keep going. We're just going to push through. We're going to push through. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm coming back to it. Uh, Atlantis didn't exist at all. Plato invented it. Most historians and scientists throughout history have come to the conclusion that Plato's account of the lost king of Atlantis was fictional. According to this argument, the Greek philosopher invented Atlantis as his vision of an ideal civilization and intended the story of its demise to be a cautionary tale of the gods punishing human hubris. No written records of Atlantis exist outside of Plato's dialogues including in any of the numerous other texts that survived from ancient Greece. Furthermore, despite modern advances in ocean oceanography and ocean floor mapping, no trace of such sunken civilizations have been found. Mm, that's not 100% true, too. We have found traces of sunken civilizations. Not an entire community, but it's like, okay, I guess, I guess technically, no, that is true. We found sunken parts of other civilizations, but we know where it came from. We know what civilization was a part of, and not all of it disappeared. It's just this part of the civilization sank. There's some really cool shit you can look online and find about like I said, sunken temples, sunken statues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So, this is my theory. Uh, I'm going to grab a beer, so we're going to take a brief break, and when I get back, we'll get into more in-depth detail about my theory. Which, again, it's not just my theory. It's a lot of people's theory. It just seems the most plausible to me. I'm back, and while I was up getting that beverage, I thought about it just a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. And they probably call it Crete because it is modern day Crete. Like, that's the name it's known by. And technically, <clears throat> Minos, which is the name I know for it, is never the right name. That's why it pisses me off. So, early archaeologists were not the archaeologists we have today. They didn't go to school and study to be archaeologists. They, uh, which you don't have to study to be interested in archaeology. But they were basically rich kids who decided to go out and play. Not always kids. Oh, I think I destroyed them. Anyway, I'm just going to keep talking while it's, while it's out. I would have frozen it on a more flattering image of myself, though. That's kind of... Anyway! Uh, but, 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 what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, spoiled rich kids going out and doing 
archaeology. Uh, sometimes this worked out rather well. Um, so, one example of it working out really well was um, uh, the city of... I fixed it! The city of... Hartsburg. There we go. Pompeii. Pompeii. The, city the city of Pompeii. Pompeii. So the city of Pompeii was a Roman city that was found at the base of a volcano called Tu. Or sorry, a mountain, mountain called Tu. They didn't know. They were Romans. They didn't know a lot about volcanology. Um, one day, the mountain erupted. And I know when you think erupt, you think lava. This was pyroclastic glow. So it's a combination of steam, volcanic gases, ash. It's a whole thing. I'm not going to get into the whole story of it because we don't need that for this. Uh, the, the part that we're, that we're getting into with some of these archaeologists, archaeologists early archaeologists being good, is the pyroclastic flow swept over the city and buried, and, and was lost for over a thousand years. years. Uh, I, I believe it was late 1800s, 1800s an individual went into that area, theorized that the base of Vesuvius is where Pompeii laid, so he started digging into the pyroclastic flow with a team, and one of, his, one of the people on his crew found a ca hollow cavity inside the pyroclastic flow, and you know, hey man, what do you want me to do about this? So he had the brilliant idea to pour a, like, make, mix up plaster there on site and pour it in this hollow cavity so they could be able to see what it was. He then excavated from around this plaster once it was set, and it was a human body. It was someone who had died in the pyroclastic flow. Um, they did this all over Pompeii, and it's a little morbid, but it gives us a very firm look at what happened in Pompeii on the, in the moment they died. No. Pompeii is a great other structure to look into because being buried under pyroclastic flow kind of froze it in time, in that moment in time. So you can go there today and see all the frescoes and the murals and they are just as crisp and vibrant and beautiful as they were during the Roman Empire. Really cool, there's a lot of really cool stories surrounding Pompeii, but again, we're talking about Atlantis, not Pompeii. I was just saying that's one of the examples of a good early archeologist. Unfortunately, so many of the early archeologists were not good. And so, like, the guy who found what we believe to be the settlement of Troy, um, these ancient, ancient cities were built where they were for reasons. One of them being they were in good places. So, typically speaking, when you have one of these ancient cities, here's the city. This civilization moves on, dies due to famine or disease, or gets conquered, whatever. The city's no longer being used. Uh, maybe it's raised to the ground, whatever. Time passes, dirt plants build up on top of it, and another civilization comes along and says, hey, this is a great place for a city, and they build another city. That city ends for whatever reason. Plants, dirt, detritus, another city. So you can have a site that has, over the course of thousands of years, 15, 16 different cities built in exactly the same spot. So when you're doing archaeological work, it's important to each time you find one of these layers where you're finding, you know, evidence of a civilization, you remove everything, catalog everything, photograph as much as you can, you document the shit out of it, because you don't know which layer is what you're looking for, but also every single layer is important, every single layer is the story of a new civilization. Uh, the guy who was looking for Troy decided that Troy, that the Troy from the, you know, the Iliad, had to be the first layer. And so he just dug straight down the fucking middle, destroying a ton of archaeological context and archaeological artifacts in the process, and he was wrong! Modern archaeologists believe that the Troy, that he's probably right, that this is probably the Troy from Iliad, but that it's probably the fourth or fifth layer, and he actually destroyed a fuck ton of artifacts pushing through it, trying to get to what he thought was the real Troy. So, early archaeologists come in different shapes and sizes. The one who found what I guess is now modern-day Crete, but he named it Minos because they started digging into the island and they found... Uh, well, he thought it was the labyrinth. The labyrinth of the Minotaur. So he named it Minos and said this was the remains of the known civilization. Um, there's, there's no fucking evidence of that. There's none. I mean, why would there be, right? But, like, there's, there's none. Uh, what he found was a massive palatial structure because the, the people on these islands built these huge palatial structures that kind of functioned a little bit, by my understanding, I could be wrong, a little bit like uh, apartment complexes. So you have these long hallways twisting off in every which direction with different habitation units built to them. 
so, so that's, that's where the name Minos, Minos comes from. from. That's, that's what we call them, the Minoans, and I kind of hate it. I kind of hate everything about it. But... Uh, let's see, we, don't, well, we do need this. But let's look at the Minoans. Wow, there's a lot of things about Minoan civilization, Atlantis. This shit took off recently, because when I when I first read about it, and was like, well, that's fucking Atlantis. It was a... Not exactly a fringe theory, but it was not a widely accepted one. Uh, let's look at technology, because the remains on those islands do actually tell us a lot about what the technological... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us a lot about the technological accomplishments of the Minoan civilization. And one of Plato's characteristics is that this was a huge advanced civilization. So let's look. Let's look, at, look how advanced the Minoans were. Do they fit the criteria of being an advanced civilization? Again, not by modern standards. I know when they say they're an advanced civilization, people are like, oh, they had huge domed cities that are probably still alive on the bottom of the sea, and they had flying cars. No, 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 no. We're talking about... Um... Time scale. Okay, so from the Greek Dark Ages to 1050 to 750. So we're talking 1050 would be from today 3,000 and oh no, almost 3,000 years. 2,090 years approximately. 2,080. I'm I'm tired, man. It's hot in my house. So I don't have an AC. Fuck off. It's hot as shit. The point is, Minoans would predate this. So. We're talking, oh, ancient Greece. Oh, never mind. You know what? Let's do this. Um, I'm wording this terribly, but it's it's. I'm tired. About 3000 BCE to about 1100 BCE, it says. And we have some example. We'll, we'll get into some of this, too, because it's just it's really fun. Oh, Britannica, we got like a fucking... You're going to be paywalled, aren't you? Like a little bitch baby. Nope, doesn't look like it. We do have some remains of the Minoan civilization. But my point is, 3000 BCE to 1100 BCE. Um, well, I'll look up the other thing later, because I'll come for the point later on. But... Technologically advanced for this time period, not by our standards. Also, this has nothing to do with what we're currently talking about. I'm just going to bring it up real quick because I find it hilarious. Um, people who are doing archaeological digs on this site saw this and were like, oh, they had a game where they would try to jump over bulls. It, it, it was a game they played. You can tell by the fresco. And it's like, was it? Was it? Or was this like their version of the YouTube video of the guy jumping over the fucking car? Like, maybe the bull charged this guy and he's like, Woo! And then they were like, Oh, fuck, did you see what Tim did? That shit's badass! Hold on, I'm gonna paint this. It'll just be a few minutes. You, you guys can get lunch. Like, we, we don't know what this means. They, they assumed it was a game. It was not necessarily a game. It could mean any of, like, nine million things. It, I just, I love how quickly people jump to... Well, this means this. Like, sometimes... Sometimes the archaeological world is every bit as dumb as the fucking ancient alien world. Not often. But every once in a while, like... Because that's what the ancient alien guy does all the time. Like, we see this picture. This could only mean this. I'm like, no, nah, motherfucker, it could mean a lot of shit. <laughs> and I see that a lot of times from, like, actual academia. It does seem like they had a... A preoccupation with the bull. It, it's the bull shows up a couple of times. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be, but it's pretty. But anyway, that one's got boobies. <laughs> so, Minoan civilization technology. We're seeing if they are an advanced civilization. Uh, water harvesting, distribution systems, cisterns, groundwater, and wells, as well as drainage and sewerage systems. Okay, so that's just dealing with there. I, I did want to see this. Um, mostly because I wanted to double check. Because I was sure I had her read this back in the Dizay Yizzo. But I just 
wanted to double check before I put it out there on the internet as fact. Drains and water pipes, that's unique for the time period. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and read the stupid AI thing and see if it's worth the shit. The Minoans developed advanced water supply systems that included aqueducts, cisterns, wells, and drainage systems. They used hydraulic filters, open stone conduits, and curved tiles to transport and distribute water to palaces and agricultural lands. These systems allowed the Minoans to bathe more frequently, which contributed to their exceptional cleanliness for the time. Uh, Minoans built structures that were more resistant to earthquakes. They also used ashlar masonry and metric systems of measurement to plan their palaces. Okay, that's a fucking stretch. The metric system didn't exist yet. You could say they used a measurement system similar to the metric system, but saying it was the metric system is a fucking stretch and a half. The first known writing system in the Aegean, including Linear A and Cretan Hieroglyphic. What phone? What the fuck are you yelling about? Shut up. Uh, I don't see anything. Okay. So some of this is stuff I've heard from other sources. So it's not entire. I've heard, and I'm not seeing it here. These are the palaces they found, by the way. I've heard that they found... Ooh, that one's got color. It's rare to see ancient sites with color because too long's past, the pigment dies. That's one part of what makes Pompeii special is underneath the pyroclastic flow, the pigment stayed fresh. And so you can still see exactly how the Romans painted shit and whatnot. So it's, Unless they're repainting it in the modern era to what they think it was, and I always hate when they do that. It's like, Doug, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? But like, huge staircase. Like, it was a really cool civilization. Um, I've heard. I've heard. And I'm not seeing it here, so I'm not sure. Knossos Palace. The Minoan civilization. I've heard they found, when they were going through these areas, they found copper pipes. That's part of what I'm looking for. Oh, they're trying to sell me shit. Not what I want. No one water system on Crete. That could be fun. Let's look at that. It's believed that this one Crete was their their main island. We also know they had a lot of you know, obviously they had a lot of fish. Rainwater collection. Aqueducts and cisterns. Aqueducts wouldn't come along until Rome, which starts at around 750 or slightly before. Anyway. So that's already hugely advanced. Again, for the time. Sedimentation tanks. I'm assuming they mean some form of ancient uh, shitbox. We have them now. I can't think what they're called right now. They're shitboxes. You shit and it goes into the box, and the, the, the solid waste filters to the bottom, and the water runs off the top to be processed. Crap! I can't. The, they bury them in your front yard a lot of the times in, in like suburbs. <laughs> Why can't I remember what the hell it's called? Anyway, I'll remember eventually, and then feel like a dumbass for not remembering now. Or it's possible they mean like rainwater collection. Anyway. There's the aqueduct. Knossos, the most known and largest of the palaces, which was discovered in the early 20th century by Sir Arthur Evans. That's the guy who decided to call it Min Minos. The Minoan civilization declined with the arrival of the Dorians, settled on the Crete between. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this shit, even with the cisterns and the aqueducts, is extremely advanced for that time period. It's just. Don't, I don't know if we've seen anyone else who was this far along during this time period. Um, the things I've heard rumors about, but I'm having trouble finding proof of now, is I've heard that they had copper pipes running into the palace. Which always seemed unlikely to me, and I found fascinating, because I was like, who the fuck? But it now that I'm not finding it, it seems like maybe I misread it, or I got a bad source somewhere. Which would make sense, because how the fuck could they be that far along? 
this kind of water irrigation and whatnot makes a hell of a lot more sense. Because what would happen is, for those of you who don't know, you would have a spring or you know rain-fed thing up here somewhere, and it would just run continuously like a small man-made river through here. This would be a basin used for probably cleaning yourself, like washing your hands, washing dishes, you know that sort of thing. And then the wastewater that was dirty from you cleaning yourself would run down this channel and out the building. Um, which is how the Romans did it, too. Like, Romans had toilets, but your toilet was basically you sat on a chair with a hole in the seat, and your waste fell into a river that just ran underneath the city. More or less. I'm oversimplifying like a mother, but that's pretty much... Septic tank! That's the word I couldn't think of. Okay. So yeah, the copper pipes, I'm not seeing any evidence of, and that makes more sense than it existing to me, because holy fuck, holy fuck. Uh, the, the source I was reading at the time that claimed they had copper pipes claimed also they had hot and cold running water, which again, would be fucking insane for this time period. But even aqueducts, aqu aqueducts, I read doc, and I brain farted two words together. Even aqueducts are extremely advanced for this time period. Uh, I've also heard... It's weird that we can't find any evidence of it. Or we haven't seen it yet. Now it's store, storing olive oil. Okay. I've heard reports that they had uh, something called Greek fire. And it was basically their ships had... According to myths in the area, essentially flamethrowers, but as they would spray an oil over their enemies and it would light the seas on fire, because of course oil floats on top of the water. But now that I'm not seeing it in any of the claims since, it's seeming, you know. Oh, uh, this is another one of their, their big tech technological advances, is they had amazing, amazing navy that was fucking beaten in combat. And when this, with the fall of civilization, that technology was lost. Uh, we found evidence on the islands of trade with... I've heard claims that they, they traded with the Britons. That, that booby statue we saw earlier, I think, was supposed to be from the Britons. So that's modern-day UK. And we know they had trade routes with the Egyptians, and that shit is insane. Like, nobody sailed that far, so that's... See, let's see. The construction method does not appear to have been used by or transferred to other word I'm not going to try to pronounce, which followed the Phoenicians. The technology represents the lost art before 1500 BC that would not be seen again until the 1950s. All ducks are aquats, where they live. I'm going to go back to my, my web page now. <laughs> Construction of Minoan Hall, I don't, I don't really, we don't need to get into the nuts and bolts of how they built it. The point, point is, is, you're already kind of seeing the, like, yes, they had extremely advanced technology for the time period. Uh, not compared to what we have, but we exist some 5,000 years after them. That makes sense. But for the time period, they were well ahead of their time in a lot of different ways. So, that's... The Minoans, to me, yes, they absolutely meet the criteria of being a advanced civilization, something that Plato would consider advanced. We're going to get into more of this in a minute with Plato. Bear with me. Um, so, one of the other qualifications. Plato described Atlantis in really fancy ways. This is one interpretation. This is another one. Based on what Plato said, I actually like this one better. But it's also... Uh, according to Plato, it was a series of concentric islands, like a circle, that led into the main island for the main civilization. I suppose now is as good a time as any to bring up um, Plato. Let's see, we got the Minoan civilization. Do we have the timeline? Uh, let's say... So 1100 BCE is when it ends. Now let's look up Plato's lifespan.
428 to 427 BCE, he was born and died in 348. So let's go, I don't know when he wrote about Atlantis, but let's just, let's just go with the 348 date. So 1100 to 348. You starting to see it? You're starting to see it, that 700 plus year gap. Any stories he heard, he obviously wouldn't have known about Atlantis because it was a thing during his time in the world. He would have heard about it from other people. And it's that whole, that whole game of generational telephone we were talking about earlier where we're talking about, what did I say, 700 fucking years? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot of goddamn time for a myth and a legend to form and for the story to shift and change from, you know, what the truth was to what it would become. So, you know, some of this is going to be kind of weird. You, you take take some of it. I mean, honestly, the civilization may never have existed. Again, I'm not saying any of this is 100% I'm right and fuck the rest of the world. Ha ha! Because that's dumb as shit. It might never have existed, but it might explain why you know, Duder is saying that, like, Atlantis looked like this. This is what Atlantis was. And there is not a fucking place in the world that looks anything like this. Well, yeah. He's hearing the story, not even secondhand, like 467th hand. Sorry, this is obviously a tabloid, but I gotta click on it. Near Britain. Dog, that's not proof of shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking? There's lions on the ocean floor, what the fuck? Anyway. So... I'm sorry, I'm liking some of these images. Like, that's just pretty. I don't think that's... It's just pretty. It's pretty. It's gorgeous. Also gorgeous. Anyway. So, uh, we get to the most important claim about Atlantis, that the entire city was swallowed in a single night. And this is the part that leads me to believe that the Minoans or whatever they were actually called, because I do not believe they called themselves that. When they might have called themselves Atlanteans, we don't know. Um, or they might have called themselves the Filthy Skunk Bugs. Again, we don't fucking know. We have no idea. There's no way of knowing. But, so the Filthy Skunk Bug people, would they have a criteria that would lead someone to spread a rumor that they had disappeared in a single night? Actually, kind of, yeah. Um, so the... As, as stated in part of the earlier things we were looking at, the uh, the Minoans, the, the skunk bugs. The skunk bugs were on two islands in the Mediterranean Sea. They were on the island of Crete and the island of Thera. This is the island of Thera. You know, as it exists today. Um, yeah, there we go. Got a nice big image there. The island of Thera would not have looked like this in 1100 BCE. It would have looked like a giant damn mountain. This was all one big mountain, and the civilization was built on the side. They did not have an airport. That is not an ancient Minoan airport. That's a fairly modern airport. I'm assuming. I suppose it could be an ancient airport, but I have doubts. Okay. Okay. So, why does the island look like this, and why do I say it disappeared in a single night? swallowed by the sea. Well, it turns out, Thera was a big damn volcano. Most mountains are. It was a big damn volcano. <laughs> and that volcano erupted with... Let's see. Um, no one eruption. There we go. Catastrophic volcanic eruption that devastated the Aegean island of Thera, also called Santorini, now. Which, by the way, Santorini, this picture's of Santorini, look at that. Oh, it's a resort community. Uh, I don't believe they knew it was a volcano and the, the site of the death of an entire civilization when they made it a resort community, but it's a fucking resort community, man. There's, like, fucking hotels and shit all through here. Like, you can go visit and, like, hang out, and I'm sure it's beautiful, but, like, god damn, a people died! Anyway, I just, it seems a little macabre, right? I mean, obviously they're not using it, but, like, still, it just, it feels a little fucked up. Um, so let's get back to this. Uh, Thera, circa 1600 BCE. It destroyed the Minoan settlement at Akrotiri. We're going to look at that later. There's some cool pictures. 
as well as communities and agricultural areas on nearby islands and the coast of Crete with subsequent earthquakes and paleo tsunamis. What's a paleo tsunami? A really old tsunami? Occurs prior to written history. Oh, there we go. Uh, paleo tsunamis are evidenced by anyway, whatever. With a volcanic explosive explosivity index of between 6 and 7, it resulted in the ejection of approximately 28 to 41 cubed kilometers of dense rock equivalent. The eruption was one of the largest volcanic events in human history to date, by the way. To date, it is one of the worst volcanic eruptions in human history. Since Tephra from the Minoan eruption serves as a marker horizon in nearly all archaeological sites, we'll get to that in a second, and the eastern Mediterranean, its precise date is of high importance and has been fiercely debated among archaeologists and vulc volcanologists for decades, without coming to a def definite conclusion. Although there are no clear ancient records of the eruption, its plume and volcanic lightning may have been described in the Egyptian Tempest Stele, the Chinese bamboo annals, reported unusually yellow skies and summer frost at the beginning of the Shang Dynasty, which may have been a consequence of volcanic winter, similar to 1816, the year without a summer, after the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Now we're going to keep scrolling through to see if I can find what I've heard of in the past. And Science is fun, but it also can be a pain in the ass because like, you learn something and you're like, this is the facts, this is what happened, this is awesome. And then like 20 years later, you're talking to someone about it and you're like, yeah, this happened back in the day and it was fucking awesome. And it turns out they disproved that like 10 years after you learned it. But what I heard was they took ice core samples in Greenland, Iceland, which everyone actually has the ice, I think it's Greenland. Anyway, uh, which, you know, is North America, off the coast of Canada, that area. I heard they took ice cores and they found volcanic ejecta from Thera there. It was, at the time I was learning about all this, believed that the seven days and nights of darkness uh, in the Egyptian Bible, one of the biblical plagues, it was believed that that was ejecta from Thera blocking out the sun on a damn near global scale for a period of a week. Like, this was not an insignificant thing. The, the article I originally read to learn about this said it erupted with the force of eight H-bombs. Now we're going to keep going through and reading about the eruption because the eruption is fascinating. But in terms of a civilization swallowed by the sea in a single night, you would think what you would remember was the volcanic eruption. But... Again, it's not like we had vulcan volcanologists back then. Maybe they just didn't know what that was. But what they would know is that the island of Crete, and I'm specifying the island of Crete because no one survived the island of Thera, period. If you were on this back half where you would be protected by these mountains, ranges, and whatnot from any kind of the explosion or debris because it would have blown out this way based on what we're seeing here. So if you're over on this side where you're protected from all that, you're still fucking dead. Because the shock wave, the extreme force that the molecules in the air were moved with, would collide with your body with such force that force would be imparted through the molecules of your own body, shattering your internal organs. No one could survive on that island. Hey, flat ass. At that eruption point, everyone on that island died. But, again, the, the reports I heard, or I read back in the day talked about Greek fire and all this and how the precursors to the Greeks who lived in the same area that would become the ancient Greek Empire... They were at war with these, well, they thought of themselves at war with the Minoans for a long time, but they couldn't, the Minoans stayed on their islands. They didn't make landfall, they lived on islands. And they had a vastly superior navy, so the, the Greeks couldn't do shit to them. But an eruption with this force would cause massive tsunamis. Those tsunamis would roll over Crete and kill probably most of the people who lived on that island. Just huge tidal wave rolling over your island. Those palaces would be flooded as the water cascaded down through them. Um, their huge, their massive, incomprehensibly strong navy would be wiped out. And anyone that did manage to survive would then be wiped out by their adversaries when they no longer had a defense. So yeah, kind of swallowed by the sea in a single night. I think it fits the criteria of Atlantis rather well, personally. Uh, again, you have to remember that it's not going to fit 100% because by the time Plato writes about Atlantis, this thing had passed into the stuff of myth and legend. People have been passing on word of it from generations to generations, telling their kids, their kids, their kids and their grandkids about it. So, like, the story would warp and exaggerate and change. But from the criteria we do have, if there was a historical Atlantis, a real location, I think the Minoan culture pretty well satisfies all those. 
And uh, Mini Minute Man, if you want to do a video debunking me and calling me a dumbass dog, I'm here for it because you're a badass and I enjoy your stuff. But also, you're half my age and more accomplished than me, so fuck you! He'll never see this. Anyway, let's continue to dig through this because, again, volcanic winter, by the way, the idea that so much volcanic shit can get in the atmosphere that it blocks out the sun and makes the planet cold. Oh shit, no, I was wrong. A volcanic winter is a reduction in global, global temperatures caused by droplets of sulfuric acid obscuring the sun and raising Earth's albedo, increasing the reflection, reflection of solar radiation. Ah. After a large sulfurous particle, particularly explosive volcanic eruption. Cool. Uh, geological, ev <laughs> geological evidence shows that the Thera volcano erupted numerous times over several hundred thousand years before the Minoan eruption. In a repeating process, the volcano would violently erupt, then eventually collapse into a roughly circular seawater filled caldera. Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. With numerous small islands forming the circle. That actually... I didn't know that. I thought it was a straight mountain until it erupted, until it blew out. I also, I, people quit living on theory, get the fuck out of there. It might end badly for you. But... Caldera was slowly refilled with magma, building a new volcano, which erupted and then collapsed in an ongoing cyclical process. Maybe it was a mountain by that time. Right. It sound, it's hard to tell by their description, but it sounds like the volcano builds the magma up, which would build a new mountain and then explode. Or that it just is the caldera. And this image we're seeing here would be... I, I, need, I need to get a zoom in on the satellite. I wonder if we can find a better image. If that's the volcano... Like, this is the caldera. Right. The caldera, if you don't know the terminology, the caldera of a volcano, when you have the top blown out, is the, the opening. is the caldera. So this is the caldera. But that actually supports the idea of this being... Supports the idea of this being Atlantis because it's got that string of islands that is what Plato talked about. Immediately before the Minoan no eruption, the walls of the caldera formed a nearly continuous ring of islands, with the only entrance between Thera and the tiny island of Aspronisi. This cataclysmic eruption was centered on a small, uh, small island just north of the existing island of Nia Kamini, in the center of the then-existing ca caldera. The northern part of the caldera was refilled by the volcanic ash and lava, then collapsed again. So I'm assuming this is the island they're talking about, so there was another island here that, you know, is probably in Canada right now. The magnitude of the eruption, particularly the submarine pyroclastic flows, has been difficult to estimate because the majority of the erupted products were deposited in the sea. Together, these challenges result in considerably considerable uncertainty regarding the volume of the Minoan eruption, with estimates ranging from between. Da -da 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 -da. According to the latest analysis of marine sediments and seismic data gathered during ocean research expeditions in 2015 2019, yeah, that's just how much shit it erupted. I want the force. Which is impossible to know for certain because, but you can get a reasonable guess. Uh, the most voluminous phase, ejecting that much magma and accounting for half of total erupted materials. Oh. This eruption is comparable to the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora, 1257 Somalis eruption. Like Tapo's Hatape eruption and around 230 CE, and the 946 eruption of Pectul Mountain, which are among the largest eruptions during the Common Era. <laughs> What's actually really fucked up about this, too, is this constant volcanic activity. It would be spaced out long enough that the Minoans, when they're coming to this island, would not know that, oh shit, that thing blows up all the fucking time. We'll sit right from there. They would never have seen it. But it would also make it an ideal habitation because one of the side effects of volcanic ejecta is it tends to be very high in things like nitrogen and basically shit that plants require. So the island was probably lush as fuck. Big, beautiful forest, lots of greenery. There was most likely some fruit-based vegetation. But also the sea surrounding it would most likely be full of edible fish because... That same ejecta is getting into the waters, it's feeding plant life on the bottom of the ocean, making a very plant-rich environment down there, which then the fish come to feed upon. So this looks like a paradise and a great place to build your civilization, and it's a fucking volcano just waiting to wreck you. Ugh. A 60-meter thick layer of white tephra, 
I don't know what tephra is. Let's find, find out. out. Fragmental material produced by volcanic eruption regardless of composition, fragment size, or replacement mechanism. Well, that doesn't tell us what it is, but thank you. Uh, for the eruption. Oh, that's cool, though. I'd... The point isn't what it is here. The point is that it delineates the ground level before the eruption. So you can see, like, where this ejecta is is kind of like, here's before the eruption, here's after, which is kind of cool. Science is fun. This layer of three distinct bands that indicate the different phases of the eruption. Studies have identified four major eruption phases and one minor precursory tephra fall. The thinness of the first ash layer, along with the lack of noticeable erosion of that layer by winter rains before the next layer was deposited, indicate that the volcano gave the local population a few months' warning. <sighs> Which they wouldn't have been able to comprehend. Uh, same thing happened in Pompeii. There was warning. Uh, you'll get things like what looks like steam, but it's actually, if I remember right, sulfur bursting through the surface. Uh, small tremors and earthquakes. And if you're an ancient people who don't know what the fuck any of this is, they tend to interpret it as the gods being mad, and I've heard reports, I don't know how much, I, there was some evidence, but some, some of the evidence was unclear whether it was human sacrifice or whether it was a parent killing their children before killing themselves because they thought something bad was happening and was trying to spare them from suffering. Um, um, but there is some, some evidence they, they might have started, started turning, turning towards, towards ritual sacrifice in order to try to appease, appease the gods because they knew the fucking island was, like, to them, the earth was shaking. Like, literally, the earth was shaking. And the only way they had to interpret that was the gods were angry, and so there's speculation they they fell to human sacrifice in order to try to... It's just, it's so... Uh, let's see. Uh, four major eruption phases, we read that. Uh, the next there was a positive indicator the volcano gave a local population two months warning. Since no human remains have been found at the Akrotiri site, this preliminary volcanic activity probably caused the island's population to flee. If they, oh, sorry. Preliminary is a preliminary activity is before the eruption. It is also suggested that several months before the eruption, Santorini experienced one or more earthquakes which damaged the local settlements. Intense magmatic activity of the first major phase of the eruption deposited up seven meters of pumice and ash, pyroclastic flow, and with a minor lithic component southeast and east. Archaeological evidence indicated burial of man-made structures with limited damage. Cool. Did we find any of those? I haven't heard anything about that. And lava fountain as well as the possible generation of tsunamis. Man-made structures not buried during, but in the mountain A were completely destroyed, of course. The third phase was also characterized by the nation nation of Caldera Collapse. The fourth and last major phase was marked by varied activity, lithic rich base surge deposits, lava flows, lahar floods, and co ashfall deposits. The phase was characterized by the com completion of Caldera Collapse, which produced mega tsunamis. It's a lahar. Violent type of mud flow or debris flow composed of a slurry of pyroclastic material of rocky debris and water. This material flows down from a volcano typically among the river valley. This is one of the worst eruptions ever in terms of what it did to a human population. The Manoa eruption is an important marker horizon for the Bronze Age chronology of the Eastern Mediterranean realm. It provides a fixed point for aligning the entire chronology of the second millennium BCE in the Aegean as evidence of the eruption is found throughout the region. Yet archaeological dating based on typological sequencing and the Egyptian chronology is significantly younger than the radiocarbon age of the Minoan eruption. By roughly a century. Holy fuck, that is a wide range. This age discrepancy has resulted in a fierce debate about whether there is an upheaval in the archaeological synchronization between the Aegean and Egypt. Archaeology... I want to see. There's certain things I'm looking for that I've heard about. Uh, sequence dating or serration. In the Aegean chronology, however, the frequent exchange of objects and styles enables relative chronology to be compared with absolute chronology of Egypt, so absolute dates could be determined in the Aegean. I mean, I get that. Um, um, but, Grain of salt, me. Uh, my interpretation, from what I'm understanding, is 
Egypt, ancient Egypt was one of the longest lived civilizations, but also they had a very firm written record. Hieroglyphs and shit. It's, it's just take me at face value. They had a very firm written record, which kind of gives a chronology, a fixed point over the course of thousands and thousands of years that you can kind of be like, this happened here, this happened here, this happened here. The Aegean area would be ancient Greece, Rome, all of that. Um, the Greeks had a very pretty firm timeline. Uh, the Romans had one of the best timelines of the ancient world we have. They had they Romans were big on bureaucracy. They wrote literally fucking everything down uh, to the point where people looked at census data and they're pretty sure they found who Jesus was and where he lived. Like that's like literally recorded fucking everything. And a lot of those records were lost during the fall of Rome and the barbarian hordes sacked the libraries and burned everything in the ground. But enough of it still exists. We have a very firm timeline there too. Um, but the Aegean period prior to the Greeks, which is what we're talking about here, was filled with a lot of city-states and a lot of rival tribes. Uh, the story of the Iliad technically takes place before what you would consider ancient Greek, even though ancient Greek was still city-states. They, they were less... whatever, just bear with me. Um, so, like, you had the city the city polys of the Greeks over on one coast. On the other coast, you had Troy. You had all these other smaller civilizations all through the middle. You had the Minoans right smack dab in the middle of the Aegean Sea. And since you have all these different people and all these different records and there's all these cataclysms and all these falls, a lot of those records are permanently lost if they even had records because not for all of them, we don't, we don't know for all of them. And so the chronology gets rough. And one of the best things for a chronology is contiguity. Uh, if all of our civilizations on Earth were to fall today, but our records were to be kept, that would be a godsend for archaeologists in the future because everyone on the planet is using a same, the same calendar. So you can create a firm timeline of everything that's currently going on, go dating back for, you know, more or less 2,000 years at this point. In the Aegean, that can't really be said. Everyone's using their own methods of dating things, plus vanishing from the face of the fucking Earth and leaving very little behind, and so the, the time frame gets goofy. So, if I understand what they're saying correctly, is they're trying to find enough in the Aegean chronology to sync it up to the Egyptian chronology, where they have continuity, so they can be like, oh, well, this happened here, and get firm dates. But it's, it's been difficult, and so their dates are not really 100%. Placed in, since the Minoan are placed in late end, late Minoan Greek chronology, late and late Helladic, and the mainland chronology, see, that's... You have your Creek chronology, which would be what we know of the Minoans and their timeline. Mainland chronology, which would be the Greek city, Polys, Troy. And the con contention concerns which Egyptian period was contemporaneous. I made a big word. I know these words, but I don't talk them very often. I read them a lot, so I can read them. I can't always say them well. Well. Uh, what do we Egyptian period is contemporaneous with LMIA and LMIB. Decades of intensive archaeological work and seriation on Crete in the late last century had confidently correlated the late LMIA with Dynasty 18 in Egypt and the end of LMIA at the start of Tutmosis III. Stone vessels discovered in the shaft graves in LH1 are also of the New Kingdom type. Multiple archaeological sites of Theron Pumice Workshop used by local inhabitants are only found in the New Kingdom strata. Almost Tempestili. Oh, that's fun. An Egyptian inscription on the Almost Tempestili recorded an extraordinarily, extraordinary cataclysm resembling the Minoan eruption. Taking together the archaeological evidence points to an eruption date after the accession of Almost the First, the year of accession based on the conventional Egyptian chronology and radiocarbon based chronology is either 1550 BCE, and so around the mid 1500s BCE, before the Common Era. The archaeological evidence are used for a Theron eruption date between circa 1550 and 1480. So approximately. What year is it? 2000. Okay. So approximately. Come on, Brian, work me, you little bitch. 13,600 years ago, give or take. 3,600, not 13. 3,600.
pottery. See, what, what sucks is how much is lost. And we might find things, because we're finding all things all the time with archaeology. Unfortunately, a lot of that is in the Middle East, and that's not really a great place to go look for things at the moment. And hopefully that will change. And by change, I mean... Israelis quit being a bitch, and people need to learn to get along with each other and not just constantly try to wipe each other out for over petty, stupid-ass differences. Because the more they fight and the more bombs are dropped, the more archaeological sites are destroyed and the more of this context is lost. This, this... I don't want to understate exactly how cataclysmic this eruption is. People would have felt this shit for hundreds of miles. Like, it would be documented firmly in a lot of different cultures because it's just... It doesn't happen very often. No, it's something scary. It's something scary. And so they would have their own tales and their own commemorations where they would paint pottery and whatnot to be like, yo, something blew the fuck up. And we need to quit with all the fighting and war across the world for a lot of reasons. But one of them is we lose our connection to the past when, sh when the shit goes on. Style in other regions has not been determined and could predate the Minoan eruption. The chronology of stone vessel styles during that, okay. That's it. Radiocarbon dates. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you should be able to radiocarbon and date. Because we found, like, pottery and tools and whatnot within. And... <clears throat> oh, I hate it. Well, you can drill in. Some of the stones that were laid. Okay. Real quick, run down the radiocarbon dating. So we are constantly bombard bombarded by radiation. Every day that you're alive, you're being bombarded radi by radiation. Now, when you're talking about organic material, you can find out roughly the time that an individual or an animal or a plant died because we quit taking on new stuff, essentially. The, the fucking hard to explain. But the radiation quits coming into us, essentially. Especially because we bury ourselves, we remove ourselves from the naturally occurring radiation. So what radiocarbon dating does is it burns that material in order to release that carbon. And then we track the half-life of that carbon, and that tells us approximately, because radioactivity decays over time. So we track the half-life of that carbon, and that tells us, or the half-life of that radioactivity, and that tells us approximately when this object was buried. Uh, it works with certain stones and whatnot, too, because they're exposed to the elements. And because they're exposed to the elements, they get saturated with radiation and that radiation then gives us approximate dates um it's more difficult to stone and especially because the structures are out and about um so it's it's difficult to do it without causing harm the easiest way to do it is to let, let's take the palace whose name i already forgot um you go to a wall and you dig under the wall and you remove a dirt sample from beneath the wall structure because that would have been you know the rock would have been sitting there that entire time you'd have no more sediment you'd have no more exposure to the elements it's been buried so you take the dirt sample from there and then you radiocarbon date that dirt sample i have they done that maybe i don't know that would tell you to tell us when that temple was built or when that palace was built um wouldn't tell us anything about the eruption or anything else but it is still valuable information to, to date the civilization see when they were here my concern is always, and these are professionals who know way more about the shit than I do. I'm not going to question them. They clearly know what the fuck they're doing. My concern is always digging that close to an ancient structure like that that you might harm the structure. Again, they know way more about the shit than I do. I'm sure they're taking precautions. I'm sure they know what the fuck they're doing. But here's a list of various different things that they've Radiocarbon dated. Well, it's pretty consistent. Also, you see these ranges at 1675 to 1525, 1663 to 1599. Radiocarbon dating does not give you a precise date, it gives you a date range. Possible offset of a few decades in previous. Anyway. Ooh, is this the ice ring? Ice core? You can leave a detectable signal of various environmental records like ice core and tree ring. The higher end of the estimate could cause severe climatic change and leave detectable signals in ice cores and tree rings. Notably, tree ring dating allows extremely precise dating to the exact calendar year of each ring with virtually no age uncertainty. 
and from properties of the annual tree rings, local climate records could be reconstructed down to subannual precision. Tree rings are fucking fascinating. Um, you can look at a tree ring and see, like, there was a drought in this year because this ring is really small. This year was extremely humid because this ring is larger. The tree grew more that year. But down to, like, you could look at, say, I mean, we don't have to track the forest fires in California. They're yearly. But, like, you could cut a tree down in California and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, there was a wildfire here in 1657. Like, it's that fucking precise. That specific ring related to that year will have a mark. It'll be darker in the event of a forest fire. But, like, that's... Tree rings are fascinating for that. You can find a lot of evidence of a lot of things and date down to, like, exact dates. Which is one of my jokes about... Well, how was I supposed to know how old she was? What, you want me to cut her leg off and count the rings? Shit. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, tree rings are fucking fascinating. In 1987, a major Greenland sulfate spike... See, Greenland, I was right, I swore in Greenland. They found evidence of the Theron volcano eruption in Greenland in 1987. I was six. Uh, sulfate spike and ice core chronology was hypothesized to be caused by the Minoan eruption based on the earlier early radiocarbon results of Hema et al. In 1988, a major environmental disruption and extreme global cooling frost ring in 1627 were also revealed through precise dated frost ring and two and two were hypothesized to be related to no interruption. So yeah. Yeah. So that that's my historical impact. We're we're gonna look at some more shit because I'm fascinated by that. Hey look, they had that crack in rum I like so much. I didn't know that that company was that old. Look at that. All the way back in sixteen hundred BCE they were making rum. Ah, oh, good for them. It's a good rum. I recommend. Anyway my point that's my theory for, for like all these reasons I think this is if there was a real life equivalent of Atlantis and again we can't prove that we, we don't know right it might have been just a myth and never actually existed right crack and rum is delicious but did you know they were this old dip this old all the way back then I don't know if bamboo they might not be that old <laughs> but anyway these are the reasons I believe this is this is if there is a real world Atlantis, I think it was this. Now, Plato was talking out of his ass. He was talking hundreds of years after the fall of what would have been Atlantis. And he was writing from word of mouth, from word of mouth, from word of mouth. I mean, there's also been reports, I don't know how much of this has been substantiated, but there's been reports that they had animals that were not native to the region that they brought over. That's where they think that bull came from. The bulls were imported to be part of some kind of game or something to that effect. But like, we're talking one of the most advanced civilizations of the ancient world, and they were wiped out by a fucking mother of a volcano. Like, Jesus Christ, this thing was rough. But anyway, let your thoughts stew. We'll come back and look at some parts of the, the civilization when I get back, because I've got to do some redneck recycling. So, right turn. Uh, if you're new, either on YouTube or Twitch, redneck recycling, so I pee and grab another beer. Okay, bye!
All right, recycling complete. I've returned. Uh, I'm probably gonna put, make the, I'm gonna post this to YouTube. I'm probably gonna put the video like something like, suck it, mini minute man, or something like that. What the fuck am I doing? I'm not listening. Anymore. Like, like I'm calling him out. And I'm not. It's clickbait, and also I just want to interact with him because he's he's a cool creator. And he's fun to like. Ha! Oh, he actually likes my stuff. He wasn't talking shit at all. I don't know. I, I think it'd be funny. I, I could be wrong. Maybe it won't be funny at all. But I'll, I'll still get a chuckle out of it. Anyway. Really? Well, I didn't know it all. I also didn't know it went off in... Okay. I also know it didn't know it went off in steps. They're saying there's evidence that they came back to the city in order to try to gather their belongings, possibly bury the dead... So if they fled and came back, and there was another, but I'm pretty sure they, the civilization was pretty much wiped out by the time this was all finished. I gotta admit, as much as I think it's weird as fuck to have a tourist attraction on an island that is the home of the one of the greatest tragedies in human history and the end of a civilization, I would still love to go here and see it. Just like I would love to go see Pompeii. I, I disagree with the statues. I think the statues were important to get context with the people and to document what they had to go through. Uh, we've done that, and we photographed those statues, and we can destroy them now. Like, <laughs> it's morbid as shit. But I would love to go see Pompeii and see a Roman city, like, in all of its glory. Like, that's, that's fantastic. That's... It looks like you can walk around this whole cow. I don't, I don't think, think they'll actually let you into the ruins, of course, because... It's one of those things, you don't want tourists going down among the ruins because you'll cause damage in so many ways that you can't anticipate. From wear and tear, from shoes on the surfaces, to just the simple vibrations can cause things to settle and start to break down. Like, it, but just being able to get even this close. It's so cool. It's like a castle. I want a better picture. Give me a picture. I'm assuming it's that. Oops, that's not a lot. That's so. F oh my god. I'm sorry, but ancient ruins are so fucking cool. Also, again, don't want to undersell. Like, it's terrible. <laughs> These people died horribly. Oh, the castle was built in the 13th century. Never mind. Never mind. You're not old. I still wouldn't mind saying it, but still. I wonder how many of the remains are still on Crete. Excavation in 2018, really? That? Oh, so maybe this isn't a tourist thing. Maybe this is just them excavating. And that's just the catwalks so where they can walk down to the excavation. I wonder if they would let you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, stay on the catwalk. Like, dog, that's fine. I don't need to get down in it. I would just love to see it. It's weird, though, that they're excavating in 2018. Like, that feels late, because we've known about this shit. I, I forget when it was discovered, but it was, I want to say it was, like, 1850? Let's find out. Let's find out. Was it Canossus? The site was first discovered, or first excavated by Minos... Not even going to try it in 1877. In 1900, Arthur Evans undertook more extensive excavations. That's that's Arthur Evans is the one I know. I think, unless they've changed it, he was the one who was most commonly credited with finding it. So 1900, like I said, they haven't found it. It's not been out all that long. You know what I'm saying? Like. But still, it's been long enough. It's weird that they're just now starting to dig into it, you know? I figured the excavation would have been well underway a while ago. Oh. 
Alright, what else do we want to look at? Let's look at more stuff. I want to look at more stuff. I seriously, I find this shit fascinating. Well, yeah, they're much better preserved. They're buried under pyroclastic ash. Reconstructed north. That's why I thought. I was say you don't get paint this vivid unless it's preserved by something like pyroclastic flow or something where it's like constrained. So yeah, reconstruction makes a lot of sense. Although if it looked like that, I don't know if it did. If it looked like that, you get a good idea what the colors were that were used. But they did have a lot of wall frescoes and oh, that's the snake goddess. Fine. So that's the castle like Canossus. That's why he thought it was Minos and the the fucking Minotaur labyrinth, because look at that shit. It's a fucking maze. There's a lot of, uh, oh well, this is classical and Roman period, so this would be, this must be people who settled in the area long after. The city had two ports, one, uh, according to the ancient geographer Strabo, the Canossians colonized the city of Brunei. So, I thought they were pretty much abandoned after the, but looks like people continue to live there. Which makes sense. It's fucking a great place to be if there's no volcano erupting. King Mios, uh, okay, yeah. Daedalus, construct a labyrinth. See, that's what the name Canossus was subsequently adopted by Arthur Evans. Arthur Evans named all this shit. So we don't know if that's what they called themselves or not. That's just what Arthur Evans decided to call them, because clearly this is Minos. Uh, fuck off. Pictures. I love pictures. I know to a lot of you, you're like, that's just fucking stone. Who cares? But like, it's, it's fascinating to me, alright? Don't fucking judge. We all have our kinks. Okay, so that's what it looked like when it was discovered, and then there's what they recreated. I'm wondering what they based that on, because you can see the delineation where the ancient stone was, so this is all stuff added to the ancient stonework. How do you know that's what it looked like, though? Like, I'm, I'm very deeply curious about that, because, like, unless you have some kind of depiction or painting, or you're just fucking guessing, you know? Again, though, to be fair, a lot of these old archaeologists were not great at their job. The, the science has come a long, long ways. Also, to be fair, all science has come a long, long ways. There was a time period where surgeons didn't realize they had to wash their hands. A lot of people died. I love, by the way, this this mural that just basically looks like they invented the rubber stamp and we're just like, look, I can make people! <laughs> I'm not saying that's what they did. I'm just saying it's funny. That one's a lady. Look at how well they did her boobies. Let's, see, let's get the blown up version. Look at how well they did her boobies. What the fuck is that? It looks like two inflated condoms hanging off the front of her. It's fucking old. Also, why is there only one woman? Right? Like, all dudes. And then one woman. You can tell by her condom. Oops. I'll stop. For now. I'll find something else to make fun of later, but... 
See, is this a re... This looks like it would be a re... It doesn't have the, the, the weathering of the rest of the stone, so I guess this is a rebuild, too. I just... I'm dying to know what they based this rebuild on. You know what I'm saying? Like, how accurate could it be? I would like it to be accurate. <gasps> Tourists! Oh, I hate being poor. I could actually go walk around this place. I know, again, to most of you that sounds boring as fuck, but to me it sounds like a fucking dream vacation. I really want to go. Gorgeous. I mean, partly because it's idyllic and you know all the trees and the pretty. But like, look at this place. Oh, it's so fucking pretty. The royal family would entertain guests here. I could be a guest of the royal family in, in spirit. Obviously, they're well, they're dust. But like, I in spirit, I could be their guest. Dude, that's a lot of pot. I'm also curious what purpose these pots serve, because pots and urns like this serve a lot of different purposes for a lot of different cultures, and it's everything from, like, pickling vegetables to, um, at certain points in the, I want to say it was the Greek culture, it might have been the Romans, they would use, not so much like this style, but like an urn as a grave marker, and it was open on the bottom, and the idea would be that when you would come to visit your loved one who had passed away, you would bring wine with you and you'd dump wine into the urn that was open on the bottom so the wine could enter the earth and it was you're giving your homie a drink you're pouring one out for your homies you know what I'm saying like and so I'm curious what purpose that, and sometimes they're just toilets by the way like they can serve a fuck ton of different purposes in different cultures and I'm curious what the purpose of these was probably not toilets maybe that one right because that's your butt cheeks can fit on that like, you just fall into that one. Imagine trying to use that when you're drunk. Fall straight in. You're terrible. There's the bull flipping. Which, again, I like to imagine is just, like, the bull was running at him. He said, oh, fuck. Grabbed its horns, flipped over its back. And then his buddy was like, yo, that's the dopest shit I've seen! And had to put it down. Well, they were aware of dolphins. Although apparently dolphins had duck bills in the past and were kind of fucking nightmares. I immediately assumed this was some kind of bathroom. And most of this would still lead me to believe that. If this basin was full of water, it's how you clean yourself. Uh, this could be a toilet, but there's no, there's no hole in the seat. So it's not a toilet. No, I don't know what the purpose. I mean, the purpose could literally be anything. It could be a sauna. You fill this with coal or wood, and then you put a urn full of water on top as it's burning. Throne room. Never mind. From which the room was named. What? The throne from, from which the room was named. Not the only throne at Knossos. Well, then it might just be a chair. It's not necessarily a throne at that point. The fuck you know. A lot of bulls. They like bulls. Maybe they had a lot of dogs. early griffin? See, that didn't help. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Russian, I'm assuming? Anyway. Fucking gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous. I would love to visit. So, yeah. In my, in my humble personal opinion, I think that the Minotian people were the Atlanteans that Plato wrote about just with hundreds of years of telephone in between. Um, could be wrong. Could easily be wrong. And whether I'm right or wrong doesn't really matter. The Minoans are still a fascinating civilization. They did a lot of really cool shit and really should be talked about more. The Atlantis Bahamas Resort. I'm not going to lie, I do want to go there. The place seems pimp. They've got a water slide that goes through like a, a fucking pool full of dolphins. Like, come on, man, that's pimp. That's dope as shit. There's an Atlantis, Florida? Hold up. 
When the fuck did we get in Atlantis? Well, I got things to look up later. What the fuck? Oh, there. Hey, check it out. Check it out. There's the... the, the oh, I guess it's sharks. Eh. Do a drop slide through a tank full of sharks. And hope to God that glass doesn't break. It's plastic. Ask AI, where is Atlantis? And that is pretty, though. That looks like a great setting for a video game. Anyway, I'm going to quit goofing around. Before we finish for the night, because we are almost done, I just want to really quickly look up one of my other favorite locations. Pompeii. Uh, again, ignore the, the corpses, because they're fucking horrifying. But... <laughs> Y'all want I can do? I can talk about this on another occasion because I love Pompeii. It's beautiful, and like I said, the the pyroclastic flow preserved a lot of shit, so we get to see more of the Roman culture as it was back in the day than we I think we do on any other site anywhere on the planet. Just absolutely beautiful. My father's been there. I've not been there. My father's been there. But these are the plaster casts I was talking about that I really think, you know, maybe maybe we don't need these. Maybe you sure shit don't need to be putting them in museums. These are actually plaster casts made of the cavitations left behind when people fucking died. One of the worst one is there's a building. I don't see any pictures of it here. But there's a building somewhere in Pompeii where, like, a bunch of townsfolk saw it coming in enough time that they hid in a basement. And they all died in the basement. Fucking terrible. Fucking terrible. And then just to like, like this. Let's look at the corpses. Like, this shouldn't be a fucking part of the tourist attraction, you know what I'm saying? Like, the important part is the historical significance of the city itself. Not using dead bodies as a fucking... That's just gross to me. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's a personal thing. Other people won't care. I'm sure the dead don't care, you know, because they're dead. But it's, it's still, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Anyway. That's me off me tonight. Uh, thank you for watching and listening to my random nonsense. If you enjoyed this style of content, let me know. I will do more in the future. If you didn't, well, fuck you. But also, I won't do any more in the future. Unless I have something particular I want to talk about. I just, I really like Atlantis. I really like the Minoan culture. I, it looks, I mean, what I know of Minoan culture, which is obviously fuck all, but it's just beautiful. It's just tragic and just, okay, we, oh, it's just absolutely tragic, but also really interesting. It is something I love talking about because I just think, I think it's so cool. And I find the corollaries between what little Plato gave us when he talked about Atlantis to the Minotians to be not beyond contestation because it literally can't ever be beyond contestation, but still fascinating and worth talking about. Anyway, that's all for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching, you beautiful, beautiful mammals. I love your faces. Until next time, remember to take care of yourselves, to look out for one another, and of course, my friends, my freaks, my villains, as always, remember to have a great day. Good night.